Okay, kids, this is complex numbers, or so you lied to me. Take two. Uh, the first time I used um, the Cool Math for Kids website and the website browser within the video function did not really work very well, so we're going to remake it. I've taken screenshots instead. I apologize. I credit Cool Math for Kids for, with all of this. Okay, so complex numbers. Let's jump right in. So far in your math career, you've been working with real numbers, and that's what we've always told you, even though some of your answers on math tests have been unreal. Ha ha. Um, all of the guys that appear on the number line are real numbers. So in this real number system, you have your number line. It goes to positive infinity on the right and to negative infinity on the left. And you've got all of these numbers that fit somewhere on the number line. So pi, um, the irrational value of the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. The square root of 3, the irrational value that when um, squared gives you the number 3. 0.345 with the 5 repeating, which is um, a, a decimal that can be... Um, converted to a fraction. Uh, I have to go back and try and remember how you exactly do that, because I can't do that right off the top of my head. Negative 7 sixths, which can be written as a, as a, as a repeating decimal, but a fraction, negative 3.5. Hold on, let me, let me, um, let me go back and, and remember how to, how to convert that repeating decimal there to a um, fraction. Hold on. Okay, so I just spent the past, like, 10 minutes, I think, converting this repeating decimal um, to a um, fraction. It's a hideous, awful, ugly fraction. It's two, oh, I gotta, hold on, I gotta get a, a color I can actually see. Two, three, oh, one, four, over 66,600. Which isn't simplified. Oh, that's super lame. Anyway, uh, just pretend pretend I did that right and simplified it nicely. Anyway, okay, you've probably been told, um, yes, even by me, that you can't find the square root of negative 4. Well, I don't think I've ever told you that. Probably what I've said is that you can't find it with real numbers because of that negative sign inside the radical sign because you can't multiply a number times itself and get a negative. All right, but there is an answer. Try to calm down. I know this is terribly exciting. It's an imaginary answer, and no, I am not making this up. So here it is. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. And that i is the imaginary unit. Okay, that's an imaginary number. What does the i represent? Well, it's the i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So the number times itself that equals negative 1 now has a name. It's i. And that imaginary unit is used to define the entire imaginary number system. Stop glaring at me like that. I promise you it's not that complicated. All right, well, with this, we can do lots of cool things we couldn't do before. And one of the coolest things in math, stop laughing, there are some cool things in math, is made with imaginary numbers, and that is fractals. I'm going to give you more information on fractals um, in the next class. Um, uh, I know that I haven't been able to do that so far. We haven't really made the time for it. Um, there are some very cool videos about fractals. Vi Hart has a really nice one. Let's look at a couple more. So here's two more very interesting looking fractals. It is just really artwork when you get down to it, but there is cool math behind it. So we're going to try to learn more about it, and I promise I'm going to bring you that in class next time. All right, so we're going back now to the square root of negative 4 is 2i. So here's what really happened. We take apart the 4 and the negative 1, and we separate it. Find the square root of 4, that's 2. Find the square root of negative 1, that's i. So if I want to find the square root of negative 25, 5i. Negative 49, 7i. Negative 13, root 13i. Just make sure that little roof doesn't go over top of the i. Sometimes they put the i in the front, sometimes they put it in the back. Technically, it's supposed to go in the back. Um, and, of course, we can't just pop that 13 out because we can't find the square root of 13. We have to leave it a radical. A complex number is made up of a real number and an imaginary number. So here's a few, 3 plus 2i, and it's supposed to be in this format, a plus b times i, where a and b are both um, going to be real numbers of some kind. So b is a coefficient of that imaginary unit. Negative 4 plus 5i, you can have them in fractions, 5 halves minus root 3 over 2i. Okay, these are all imaginary numbers. Remember the difference of two squares? Well, we know how to factor that. We've been working on factoring for a while now. Hopefully we got that factoring quiz knocked out the last time I, um, when I was out. Uh, you've probably been told you couldn't factor this at all, which you have by me. You can't factor a sum of squares, not with real numbers. So, again, we fibbed. I know. I'm sorry. 
let's take a look at what we would be doing if we factor the sum of squares using comp. We just need one more thing. Okay. Now, since i is the square root of um, negative 1, you can square both sides of that and you get i squared is actually negative 1. And that's how we um, can factor that sum of squares. Instead of having um, 3 minus 3 times plus 3 give us minus 9, we have minus 3i plus 3i, which gives us minus 9i squared. And we're going to look at what happens with that on the next slide. Um, so instead of the difference of two squares, we get the difference of uh, x squared and 9i squared, but that i, that i turns into a negative 1, and you can see it right down here. So when we FOIL this out, you've got x times x, x squared, x times 3i, 3ix, minus 3i times x, minus 3ix, minus 3i times plus 3i is minus 9i squared, the i squared is a negative 1. So you can simplify by canceling out these two terms in the center because they're opposite signs, additive inverses, and that negative 1 times minus 9i, well that becomes plus 9. Whoa dude, it totally worked! So x squared plus 9 is x squared minus 3i and x squared plus 3i. So we can do the same thing with x squared plus 25. Let's try a couple on the next slide before we call it quits with this particular video. Okay, let's try a couple together. x squared plus 36. So we have our x and x, because we know that's the only way we're getting x squared. And um, because it's a sum of squares, instead of 6 and 6, it's 6i and 6i. And one's a plus and one's a minus. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. How about this one? A little bit different because you've got the 9x squared this time. So instead of x and x, it's 3x and 3x. And there's no i on that one because that one is already positive, Okay, as the first term always is in a sum of squares or a difference of squares. And then the square root of 64 is 8, so 8i and 8i, 1 plus, 1 minus. And the last one, x and x, x squared plus 1. So square root of 1 is just 1. So it's 1i for each one, so just i, and it's 1 plus and 1 minus. And that one we'll go ahead and multiply out so we can see it. First, outer, inner, last. These two cancel, and this is really minus a negative 1. So it's x squared minus negative 1, or x squared plus 1. Check. That was a check. I didn't quite make the check part of it. All right, just a few more types of operations using um, complex numbers. Let's um, look at solving um, slightly more complex, um, or not solving, but, excuse me, this is, this is factoring. Let's look at solving some quadratic equations. You, when you use the quadratic formula, you're very likely to see some um, action with that um, um, complex unit. Um, oops trying to erase instead I was scribbling more. Um, so here you have uh, x squared minus 6x plus 25, which cannot be factored. So we know that we're going to have to find a different method to solve it. And up until now, you've just said that there's um, no, uh, <clears throat> no solution. And you could say no real solution, but there was no real solution because we got to this point and we couldn't go any further. Well, now we can. Now we can because we plug in all our values for the quadratic formula. So the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4 and a is 1 so times c all over 2a and we simplify it down and we get negative 64 under that radical sign. Well we can do that now. It's 8i now. So I have 6 plus or minus 8i all over 2. You can separate them out, divide, and it's 3 plus or more minus 4i. 3 plus or minus 4i. So the two solutions are 3 minus 4i and 3 plus 4i. And you can write them like so, usually x equals, and they're your curly braces. Let's look at another one that doesn't come out actually quite so nice as that one. 2x squared plus x plus 25, plug it all into that quadratic formula. Opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This time you get a negative 79 in the radical sign, so it's much less attractive looking. Um, it, it ends up with a plus, so negative 1, plus or minus, and you have root 79 and then the i. So notice carefully that that i doesn't have the roof over top of it. Don't, don't put it underneath the little radical roof. Um, it is, uh, the, the square root of 79 is a coefficient. All right, so let's try one of those um, together on the next slide. 
We're not going to do both of them. We're just going to do one. Let me move this picture out of the way here. And let's try that um, first one. Okay, so x squared minus 10x plus 29. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Oh, not 27. 29. 29. Okay. All right, so the opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 a is 1 times c is 29, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So 10 plus or minus square root of, okay, so that's 100 minus 4 29s. 4 20s is 80, 4 9s is 36, so it's 116. Ooh, that works out nicely. All right, up here, 10 plus or minus square root of negative 16, which is attractive be only because 16 is a perfect square. So 4i for the square root of negative 16. Separate them out. Divide. And there you go. 5 plus or minus 2i. 5 plus or minus 2i. And those are our two solutions. Those are our two solutions for this particular equation. Okay, so two imaginary solutions. Okay, now outside of quadratics, the other things we have to be able to do, we have to be able to do simple operations with complex numbers. So adding them, we treat it just like a variable. i plus 6i is 7i. Uh, multiplying with the distributive property is the same, unless we have an i squared, in which case we have to rewrite, which we will get here, so let's do this one. 4i times negative 2 is negative 8i. 4i times minus 8i is negative 32i squared. And what I usually do is just cross that out, cross that over, because that ends up addition. So we have 32, uh -oh, 32, positive 32 minus 8i. So now it's written in the uh, correct format. And then this one is just like you use FOIL, just like you would um, if you were multiplying out with um, real numbers. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Outer is 2 times plus 4i, so plus 8i. Minus 4i times minus 6, so plus 24i for the inner product. And minus 4i plus 4i, when we multiply them, we get minus 16i squared. But I'll change my colors and... All right, simplify. Negative 12, so I have a negative 12 plus 16. Negative 12 plus 16, positive 4. Plus 8i, my, uh, plus 24i is going to be plus 32i. And there you go, 4 plus 32i, simplified. Okay, one more skill with this. Using a conjugate, using a conjugate. So the conjugate of an imaginary number is the same um, coefficient and same constant, but the opposite sign in front of the imaginary unit. And what it allows us to do is it allows us to use the difference of squares pattern to get rid of imaginary numbers. So let's come to our problems in a moment. And just real quick, I want to have us FOIL 3 plus i and 3 minus i together and see what happens. So let's FOIL it out. So first, outer, inner, last. So first would be 3 times 3 be 9. Outer would be minus 3i. Inner would be plus 3i. And last would be minus i squared. All right, change it to a plus 1 for that minus i squared. Minus 3i plus 3i cancel out. So 9 plus 1 is 10. 10. So when you FOIL conjugates together, the imaginary unit disappears. And that's how we do something called rationalizing. It should be realizing, right? Oh, God, that's terrible. Realizing. Rationalizing these denominators. We multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate. So for this first one, what's the conjugate of minus 5i? Well, again, it's the opposite sign in front of the imaginary unit. So it's plus 5i. In the numerator, you just distribute it. In the denominator, you multiply it, and your imaginary is gone. So in the denominator, it's going to be minus 25i squared, or positive 25. And in the numerator, we're going to multiply both of these. So it's going to be 50i minus uh, 50i squared. Sorry, it's a little crowded up there at the top there. And we know that that's, that's not going to stay, because i squared is really a negative 1. So I have 50 plus 50i over 25, which as you can imagine, we're going to simplify and make it 2 plus 2i. Two All right. 
That was easy for that first one. Let's look at the second one. What is it that I'm going to multiply by on the numerator and denominator? Well, again, it's the opposite sign for the imaginary number. And the reason, remember, just as a quick review, remember, the reason this works right here and the reason this works right here is that anything over itself, even if it's two imaginary numbers, has a value of 1. So really all we did was use the identity property and multiply by 1. Um, so perhaps we just found a good reason, again, for knowing our properties. Knowing we can multiply by 1 and not change anything might be helpful. We just wouldn't necessarily think about 1 looking like, well, looking like that. Okay. Distribute. 8 times negative, 8i times negative 1, negative 8i. Um, 8i times minus 3i is going to be minus 24i squared, which cancels. Negative 1 times negative 1, I'm going to foil it. So negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1 times minus 3i plus 3i. Positive 3i times negative 1, negative 3i. Plus 3i times minus 3i minus 9i squared, which again cancels out. This is gone. And we end up with 24 minus 8i in the numerator over 1 plus 9, which is 10. This simplifies to 24 over 10, which would be divide them both by 5, right? No, divide them both by 2, which would be 12 over 5. My cell phone's ringing. I'm almost done. 8 over 10 will be 4 over 5. And then tack on the i. Sorry about that. Had to uh, talk to my kid's dentist on the phone. Um, so that wraps up our second complex, second take at the complex numbers video. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I apologize if it's a bit too long. See you in class.